Uh, hello everybody. So people have been asking me how do I uh, how do I call an API from No Codex? I have this third party service that I want to use, for example, to create PDFs, or maybe this AI routing service that I want to use within my application. Um, so uh, I thought let's let's create a video on how you can do that. Uh, so let's first of all create an API within no codex. So we have an API to call, of course. So that's pretty simple. All I have to do is create a small data format. For example, here, let's just say create a, a data format for orders. Orders should, should have a, a name, a date, a, a price a price and a quantity, for example. So let's create this data format. Let's see what the AI does with this. Um, let's let's go date currency integer, voila, that's good. Let's create it. Now let's create some test data. So I can go on ahead and create some test data. Create 10 test orders. Voila, so the, uh, the AI is now creating some test data for me. In the meanwhile, I can go on ahead and generate my, uh, my API. Uh, so that's not correct. So I'll have to go on to APIs. I hit create and then I can choose to create an API, a read API from a data format. So I choose my data format right here. Boom. So that's my read API. So now uh, let's see if I have some um, data yet. So uh, let's check out if this API works. Okay, I'm getting um, I'm getting an error page because I'm not authenticated. So let's switch off authentication right now, and let's see. All right, so we get a 404 because there's no results. So let's see if we can uh, add some data to it. So now we have some orders in our database. So the LLM is done uh, generating some orders. And if we call this API right now with a correct identifier, like for example, this one, I will get a response from this API containing the data in the database. So let's now go on ahead in no codex and let's um, Let's create an, another application in which we will call this API. So yeah, here I have my brand new application. So let's now call the API that we've just created uh, through this application. So the endpoint was uh, this one right here and I needed to add an ID to get, um, to get the order from the database. So let's uh, quickly implement this right here. So let's copy and paste this JSON right here. Copy, voila. Let's create ourselves a new data format because I have to have to know the format of the response of this API. Let's create it from JSON. Just copy paste your JSON in here. We can call this order and this will create a data format for you. So uh, we'll have to wait a little bit because this also uses a little bit of an AI to actually name the uh, fill in the descriptions and stuff like that. So it has the name, the date, the price, the and the, the quantity. So we'll save this. This is my um, order data format, um, and of course you can add uh, fields if new fields pop up in the API. You can add uh, fields later and stuff like that. So let's create a small action. So maybe we can do it like this. Uh, we created an, an action right here and let's call this, um, call the order, the, the order API, voila. So voila, my action has a start block right here. And all we have to do is actually use the API call right here, do it like that. And maybe, no, that's fine. And we copy and paste this endpoint here. Voila. We copy paste it right here. And we see that there is no authentication at the moment, but you can add authentication if you need it. You can add some headers if you need it. You can add extra query parameters, which we will do, by the way. 
So we'll add the ID query parameter and then we'll add this hard coded ID for now and we can, we can um, make it dynamic in the future. Uh, so this is a get method of course and the response type is JSON. Uh, the response is response or I want it to be written to the variable called response and the data format that I want to use is order. And let's maybe put it on the output of this action. So let's check here, um, let's select object and then let's call this response, voila. So that's enough and also let's, let's do uh, text and status. So we can actually see if, if the status is okay or, or not. So let's try this out. We can hit test right here. We create a new test and then we just uh, execute the test and see that the order came out of um, the API. So we call the API and this is actually the response of this uh, of this uh, um, um, action. But of course we can do lots of stuff with that data that we now have called from the API. For example, I can choose to write something to my application log like this. Up. And maybe I can choose to do it like this. This is the order that I fetched. And then I'll, I'll just put a placeholder in here. Um, let's call it order name. Voila. And then let's or let's uh, um, write out response.name, which is actually the response that I fetched from the from the API. And let's also do order price like this. Uh, we can do it like this: price order price boom boom and amount amount order order amount and let's create another another um, select price here let's create another placeholder right here uh, it's called order amount order amount or quantity okay let's just keep it at amount for now and let's see if i selected everything correctly so that's that and let's put it at uh, let's put the log level at error so we see a nice uh, red bug, bug popping up. So if we now run our test, you'll see that um, we have um, a log line in our application log uh, showing us that we fetched the order, which order that we fetched, what was the price and what was the amount. Of course, we can do more interesting stuff. Like for example, we can multiply uh, multiply those two numbers. So we can multiply um, the amount and the um, the amount and the price. So let's do that. Let's uh, and let's let's call it total price, for example. And let us write that to the log. So uh, or maybe that's fine if we can just use it as output of this API, of this action. So let's pick a number right here and I called it total price. So the thing is when you create an output for an action, which will be an output when you use this action by using the execute action block right here uh, in other actions. So you can abstract away the logic that you need to like call this API. Um, now, if you want to use an output, so you want to have an action that returns a result to every action that, that this action calls, you'll have to make sure that you create an output for this action, which has actually the same name as um, any variable that you put on the scope during this action. So uh, I have, I created here, I multiplied the price with the quantity and I named it here total price. So that's being written on the variable scope. So actually uh, now I can create an action and this, uh, this um, value on the variable scope will be used as the output. So let's see if this works like this. Let's, ex let's execute this and we have a total price. So that's it. That's how you call an API from NoCodex. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like NoCodex, please keep, keep, on, keep on playing with it. Keep on experimenting. Keep on building nice stuff. Um, and reach out if you need any help. Bye.